Okay, this is a, a long tail uh, silver Wilkinson. Um, it's, it's pretty much similar to the traditional version, which would have the golden pheasant in the tail. Um, this, the difference is, I suppose, it's, it's coming in with the um, the Scottish influence of the long tail version, or long tail um, style. Uh, and really, what we've got is um, bucktail in the in the tail rather than the golden pheasant, um, and then I kind of what I call the fire tail treatment. So there's a little bit of um, softer material just above the bucktail. Uh, in this case, it is uh, shadow fox, magenta shadow fox. Um, after that, it's really fairly traditional. Uh, I've got a silver body. Uh, in this case, I've used braid rather than the uh, more normal flat tinsel. Just gives it a wee bit more of a robust. Um, yeah, just makes it a, a stronger fly. Um, middle hackle is magenta, and then followed by that, um, we've got again a silver body and then uh, kingfisher blue front hackle and this one here rather than traditional red this is a fluorescent red uh, head just gives it a wee bit more of a, of a trigger point uh, and that's really the fly and uh, we'll get started tying it okay and let's get uh, started and the hooks we're going to be using today are a uh, mustad um, they're actually a mustad double um, hopefully you can see that DL71. Um, there's quite a lot of different um, uh, double hooks on the market now. Um, some new ones, part which are brought out Patriot Double, um, and also Fooling Mill have a Magni, uh, a Magni. Um, but as I say, we're going to try it on the um, on the Mustads, and these are size eight. Um, so let's get started. Um, and the thread I'm going to be using today is uh, it's a white UTC. Um, uh, number 70 um, it's a nice thread um, it lies very flat um, and because the body we're going to be tying is silver uh, we don't want to be using maybe a red thread because um, sometimes that might show through um, so let's let's get started um, so what I normally do is just start where the middle hackle is going to be tied in it's a good sort of marker and judge for yourself um, and then the tensile we're going to use today uh, on the tag uh, silver oval tensile uh, and this is Lagarten. Uh, again, there's different brands, uh, but Lagarten would be uh, one of uh, the favourite ones that I would use. Um, so just to tie that in, um, always tie it in uh, below the hook. Uh, I just tie it in, and then what we do is we just work backwards uh, until you really, really start, and then work back up again until the hook points. Um, and just tie that in, touch and turns forward and it is important that you you finish where the hook points are. If you started any further back what will happen is the tail uh, would actually be slightly angled down um, but generally the flat part of the shank of the hook is level with the, with the hook points. That's a good sort of guide for you. Um, so we'll just tie that off now and again always just tie it underneath the hook and I would come up to uh, where the hackle point is going to go. So that's the first part of the uh, of the fly. So we're going to go back down again um, and we're going to tie in the tail. So the tail on this fly here, um, is, the rest of the fly is like a traditional uh, Wilkinson, Silver Wilkinson, but um, we're going to tie a long tail version. So rather than using uh, golden pheasant tail, we're going to use some bucktail. Uh, and this is magenta uh, bucktail. So hopefully you can see that. Um, and this is just a bit of prepared, um, but I'll show you what the... Uh, it's a nice bright um, magenta bucktail. Um, so hopefully you can see that. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's see, this is a bit that I've... I've already made. So what we want to do is just to tie it in um, about one and a half times the length of the hook. Um, and we just tie it in on the top. Light turns to begin with um, because bucktail will um, it will f splay very easy. Um, just light turns to start with and then once you have it bound in you can do slightly tighter turns. So that's this. And then what I normally do is just tie just cut that off. Okay. Okay. And 
you can see the tag there, um, it's just sort of rising it slightly, uh, which is what you want. The next thing we're going to be tying in uh, is a little bit of bling. I have known from a bling. Um, and the one we're going to be using today is um, it's a Future Fly product. Um, and it's uh, the color of it's called um, M Purple, um, M after the, the river in uh, Sea Trout River in Sweden. Um, and as you can see here, hopefully, um, it's a very nice sort of product, angel hair, but it's made up of different um, colors. And it just helps to add a wee bit of extra into the, uh, the tail of the fly. So literally we'll just select a bunch of that. Um, and we'll just take out some, you don't want too much um, in the fly. So we'll just take some of the excess out. But it's a very nice, um, lots of different uh, colours in it. And again, what I do is use the lift and lock method. So you go under the fly, use the weight of the tension of the uh, of the bobbin, and bring it forward, um, and then a couple of turns, and then just bring it back on itself, and that locks it in, so that it's not going to to go anywhere. Uh, and then that's it. And you can just take some of it out. Uh, Say so you don't want too much of a just want to have a wee bit of a uh, just some of it glinting through and about the same same um, length as the tail okay and what we want to do now is just add a wee bit of a softer material this is called um, well I, I call it uh, giving it the fire tail treatment so uh, most of the buck tail flies um, I would use I'd always put a wee bit of softer um, usually fox just above them um, just to help to give it a wee bit of an extra uh, wee bit of extra movement um, so let race just a little small bit um, take just a little bit out of that um, and you don't want it too long but just a little bit The tail of long tail Wilkinson, um, and as I say, that's really what diff what makes it a bit different from the um, uh, from traditional pattern, which would have the golden pheasant. Um, so that's really the, the tail of the fly. Um, um, you want a nice sort of taper as well. So hopefully that's that's giving the taper. And then the next bit of the body um, is the uh, tensile, and you can either use traditional tensile. Or what I tend to do now is actually use braid. Um, traditional tensile, uh, if you're lucky enough to catch a fish or two, um, it can be a wee bit uh, fragile, um, and even if you do put a rib on it, uh, but if you use the braid, it's generally a bit more of a robust material. So again, this is like Arten, there's quite a number of different brands of, of braid now, uh, but I like using this one. Um, also speeds up the process, because um, you don't have to tie in a, a rib. So that's it. And what I actually do as well, just to make it a wee bit easier to tie, I fray the uh, the end of it, and that just makes it a wee bit easier when you come to tie it in. So we'll go back up to the uh, to the rear of the fly, um, and just catch it in, and tie it down. And then all we're doing now is just winding it around the body of the fly. The midway point, and then we're just going to tie that off. That's it. And now we're ready to tie in our middle hackle, and the hackle on a on a Wilkinson. Always use a wee bit of wax as well, particularly when you're tying in uh, a material that might slip away. Um, and the the hackle on uh, the Wilkinson is again the magenta. <clears throat> the magenta shows up very well in the uh, uh, particularly peaty um, spate type rivers uh, like we would get a lot in Ireland and we get some on the, uh, the Tyne and other in Scotland 
um, but the, the uh, magenta really shows up very well so uh, that's a nice magenta cape um, and what I've done is I've selected a feather that's, that's the right uh, size so I measure it against the, uh, the hook point um, and I've also taken off some of the fibers um, just from the uh, from the top here and again that just helps to when you're tying it in so what we do is we tie it in by the tip um, just at the side and then what we want to do is we want to fold the hackle a number of different ways you do it but I always would use the back of the scissors just to introduce the uh, the backward sloping angle and you just use the back of the scissors yeah and obviously it's the back of the scissors not the uh, the sharp end and then just with your fingers you can you can fold that back and that's us ready to go and again I know my just take that off and then use a pair of hackle pliers and then we want to just wrap that up and it's nice and touching turns um, and it just depends how, um, how dressed you want the fly, if you want a sparse fly or if you want it, um, um, maybe a slightly heavier dress fly if, it's for, uh, if you're going to be fishing uh, heavier water. But I think that's probably enough. So I'll do is just take those, those off. going to tie that off and what I always like to do just to make sure the fly is, is very robust and strong always just make sure you do lots of enough turns there at the bottom and just stroke those fibers back uh, take it the right angle and then we can just cut that That's our middle haggle. Um, and then we want to repeat the same with the body. So we're going to be using again the uh, Lagarde and Tinsel. Um, and again what we'll do is we'll just fray the, little, the edge of that. It's a wee bit easier to turn or to tie in but also to, uh, to do the first, the first wrap. Do is just slightly come down on the on that hackle. Okay, that's our that's the body tied in. Okay, and the next couple of things that we're going to tie in, just a couple of things left, are um, some jungle cock. Um, and you get different qualities of jungle cock and different colours. Um, this is quite a nice uh, rich one. You can also get lighter uh, shades of jungle cock. Um, so what you want to do as well is you want to choose a pair of eyes, not only from, from one side um, and then the matching pair from the other side. Um, so what I've done, I've already prepared a couple of these and they're ready to tie in. So, yeah, there's different ways to tie them. I like just for speed, I normally just tie them in together. Um, so you just want to place them down where you be, you want to tie them in. Um, and then you can, a couple of light turns just to place them. And then after that you can tie them, tie them in. And generally what I do is once I've tied them in, I fold the stalks back on each other. Um, that really just locks them in. And it means they're not going to, uh, to go anywhere. Okay, so we're very nearly finished. Just now the front hackle to uh, complete the fly. And again, just a wee bit of wax, extra wax. Most of the threads will actually come pre-waxed, but um, if you add in a little bit extra wax, it just helps to uh, uh, make them easier to tie in. And the um, 
the Van Hackman on the uh, Wilkinson is the Kingfisher Blue. Um, this one's actually a, a hen, hen uh, cape, um, but it's like a cocky hen, if that makes sense. Um, and what it is, it's 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 not too henny, um, so that's what I tend to use, particularly on smaller um, smaller flies. Um, so like with the um, with the magenta hackle, uh, I already pre-prepared this, so I've taken some of the waste or most of the waste off the, the stock end and also the tip, cut some of the fibres. And again, what we really want to do is just repeat the step that we've really just done, um, which is just to tie it in at the side. Um, you can use the back of the scissors just to stroke those fibres back to introduce the, uh, the backward angle. The other thing, because these are um, the Chevron hackles are very good quality. Um, the hackle fiber is quite dense, so you probably only need two, maybe maximum three um, turns of hackle. And again, just use your hackle pliers, and we're just going to wind this on. Just being careful of the hook points and just stroke those back as we go. And you can see the proportion of the um, the hackles as well. Um, the uh, the middle hackle is actually longer than the front. Um, this is a slightly more modern way to tie an Irish shrimp fly and uh, the more traditional um, or the traditional was um, uh, to have a longer front hackle uh, but it was actually Robert Gillespie um, so sort we of started tying with the, uh, the shorter front hackle and that's what I prefer I think it gives it just allows the, um, the fly a bit more both hackles to uh, uh, to pulse separately um, so that's really that. that done. And again, we'll just tie that, make sure that's well tied in at the bottom, underneath. I'll just stroke those back. And then we'll tie that, tie that up. And normally in the Wilkinson, um, you'll have a red head. Um, but what I like to do is um, get a wee bit of a brighter, brighter head. Um, so what I'll do is um, I'm just going to change this from thread to a floss, um, and that just gives it a bit more of a. Uh, I suppose it's, it's an extra trigger point for the fly, um, and the floss I use is uh, it's a glow bright, uh, glow bright number four, and it's like a fluorescent sort of red. Um, and as I say, it just gives it a, a nice vibrant red uh, head, um, which I think works works very well with the fly, complements the fly. Um, and as I say, just gives it a, a nice sort of contrast. So I'll just change that over. Another wee tip when you're tying this in, you can't tie it in just straight. But if you actually use a wee bit of floss, it was actually I was watching a, a video by David McPhail. He always has lots of good tips um, and very sort of practical tips. So if you just lightly um, wax the thread or the floss, it just helps to uh, when you come to tie it in. And again, just like we normally do. Just going to tie it off as we normally would. Just, just enough to give it a nice sort of head. That is our our fly. So there you go. Hopefully that's been 
uh, useful and helpful.